Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. Now, normally, when you visit my channel, I would have several different craft projects for you, but today is a little different. I'm going to show you how I took a cardboard box to create this beautiful storage for my ribbons. So go ahead and get yourself a box and let's get this project started. If you have ever watched a video on junk journals, this process that I'm going to be doing will look somewhat familiar to you. I've already prepared this one to start covering with fabric, but before I do that, I want to show you using this box the process of how I got here. First, I start by removing these shiny labels because your glue really doesn't want to stick to these. And now we're going to deconstruct our box. These little babies right here are extremely handy. So I'm going to cut the flaps off of our two longer sections here. It is just so easy. Now I'm going to cut from corner to corner all the way down on all four sides so we can remove this section here. Then we're left with these three sides here like it's a book. And then finally, I do cut down to cut these two pieces apart that we're going to be using for our spine. And once you've cut these two pieces apart, this is actually going to be the straightest edge that you have on your box because everywhere else is just kind of jagged. So I put the straight edge at the bottom run that across there. It doesn't really cut all the way through. And then I can take these beauties here and just cut along that score line. That way all of my edges are nice and neat and even. And now that I have squared up both pieces, I'm going to put these two together and line them up in the middle. Then I'm going to take some duct tape I'm gonna tack it down just on one side. So it's kind of like a little flap like that. So that way I can double check and make sure that my edges are all nice and tight and there's no gap. And then I can take it and rub it down over the rest of that seam there. And then I'm gonna flip it over and tape down this side as well. I'm going to take some fine grit sandpaper and just kind of rough up this tape here because sometimes when you have shiny surfaces like this, your glue just really doesn't want to adhere to that surface. And I'm going to do that to both sides. So I'm going to be using this fabric for my first little ribbon book and I just love this. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby a couple of years ago and it's just a nice heavier weight cotton and I just think it is so pretty. And I want this to be on the front on the outside of the cover. I'm going to turn it over like this and I'm just going to cut just a nice big rectangle here just to make sure I've got enough fabric that's going to be able to come up over and cover my box. And I'm just going to make sure that my fabric is going to be all lined up properly. So you can see I've clipped it to the top. That way I know my fabric is going to stay straight. So I am going to take this clip off here because I like to start in the middle on the spine to glue and then work my way out. And I'm going to apply my Mod Podge and I'm using more Mod Podge than I normally would if I were doing a paper project because I want to make sure that this thicker fabric is really going to lie down and stick. This is my Cricut scraper, but you can use anything that you have that's going to help you smooth out and stick down your fabric. So now that we've got this piece down, I can go ahead and remove my remaining clips. And again, we're going to work that down and really work it into those creases. And now I can roll this back, apply a nice thick even coat of my Mod Podge, and I'm just going to rub this down, smoothing out any wrinkles or bubbles. And I love Mod Podging with fabric. It just turns out so pretty. And then we're going to turn it around and come back 
and do the same thing to the other side. Now we're going to take this and we're going to glue this to the inside. But before we do that, I'm going to clip my corners. And I'm leaving just a little bit of fabric right here. I'm going to put Mod Podge along that top edge of my cardboard. Bring it down on my cardboard just like this. And then put a little bit on the fabric as well because I really want that to be stuck down really well. And you want it to be nice and tight. We want to come in here at those creases and really get that stuck down in there as well. Making sure everything's nice and tight. And now that we have both of our edges done, we're going to do the exact same thing and glue down our sides. And this is just already starting to look so cute. I love it. And then I come back over and add more glue at the corner and just kind of really work that in with my finger. And there we have it so far. I love it. And I'm going to set this aside to dry. Now I'm going to go off camera and cover my other book in the same fashion. Next I'll be using my Aline's Tacky Glue and some lace. And we're going to be gluing this down onto the inside of our covers here. And that's going to make ties. It's just going to help things stay together once we start putting our supplies inside. You can use whatever kind of all-purpose glue you have, but I just prefer the Aline's. And I'm just eyeballing the middle of my cover here. And I've placed my lace about a half inch away from the fold of the spine here. Run a zigzag little bead of glue here. Going to smooth that out with my finger. So you can see that's what the application there looks like. And then I'm going to roll this back, apply some more glue here, and I'm going to do the same thing with each of my covers here. And now that I have all four pieces of my lace in there, we're going to set this aside to let our glue dry. For our next step, we're going to be working on the spine and the configuration that we're going to use to be applying our pages to. And it's easier if I show you what this looks like because then when we start actually folding this piece of paper, it will make sense to you when you see what the final product is actually supposed to look like. To begin with, I want my page to be just a little bit shorter than the book itself. I'm going to make a little mark. And then I'll trim off the excess. And the paper that I'm using is actually a nice heavyweight scrapbooking paper. It has a nice good heft to it. Now to form the peaks and the valleys of our paper, I'm going to show you how I use this gridded pad here to make scores in the paper for easier folding. And then I'm also going to show you how to use a mat and also a ruler to do the same thing if you don't have a scoring pad. So to begin, I'm going to fold my paper in half. And it is easier if you use a bone folder, something that is going to give you just a very nice, crisp, even fold. Next, I'm going to take this fold here. I'm going to take my Cricut brayer, and I'm going to score it a half inch on either side of that fold. Now I have three lines there. Now I'm going to measure an inch away from this fold line. I'm going to score one line, another line at a half inch, and another line at a half inch. And I know this may seem confusing, but when we start to fold it, it will start to make sense. Then I'm going to come again one inch away from this score line and make three more lines that are a half inch apart. On this side, I'll show you how to do it if you do not have a scoring pad. I'm going to make a mark at one inch and lightly draw those lines. Draw another line at half inch and another line at half inch. 
So instead of score lines, we're actually drawing in our fold lines. And then from this last line right here, I'm going to go over an inch and make three more lines. So one line an inch away, another line at half inch, and another line at half inch. So with our score lines, we'll start in the middle. I'm going to place my ruler and fold it back. Place my ruler and fold that back. So then that way we form our first mountain peak here. I've got my three score lines. The one in the middle is going to be the peak. So we can fold along the peak. Place my ruler on the first score line and fold it. And place my ruler on the other score line and fold it. And now I'm going to use some double-sided tape. And this is half-inch double-sided tape because I made my little peaks here half-inch. So I'm going to place that tape in the fold and then press it down. So I'm just going to continue placing my tape in that fold and then pushing it down to one side. Because when I pull that off, that reveals the other side of the tape. So all of my little folded peaks here are going to stay together with that double-sided tape in each one. So now I'm going to show you how we install this into our spine. First, I take my tape measure because it's easy to get in there, and that helps me easily mark the middle of my spine. And I just make a mark at the top and the bottom. You want to take the middle of your paper and you're going to line that up. And then once you have that centered up, we're going to be using a double-sided tape roll. Now I'm going to fold this over. And I'm just going to make line after line after line. I'm also going to make sure I get it really well along that top edge there and the bottom edge as well. And then starting in the middle, roll all of that down and press it firmly into your tape. Roll the other half up and do the same thing with your tape. Again, we're going to start in the middle and just rub all of that down into our tape. Then I take my bone folder and push that tape into that seam. And now I take a small brush and my Allen's Tacky Glue. Anywhere that I see that that is not all the way down and adhered, I just rub my glue in there and then push that down. Because if this isn't down well, whatever you put on top of that isn't going to stick. So now we're going to let all of our glue dry and then we're going to start putting in our pages. Hopefully you can see how this is actually coming together. This is going to be where we're going to be wrapping our ribbons or our laces around. Now let me show you how I actually made my template. Remember our little peaks here on our pages are a half inch high. So that's why I have this half inch section here at the bottom. And that is how we're going to be attaching them as well. I took an eight by 10 inch piece of my poster board. So then on my 10 inch side, I marked a half inch up and a half inch in on both ends. And then I made my line on each side. And we're going to cut these off. Then I'm coming in four inches from each side. That leaves me a one inch space there. And I'm going to make a light line at the bottom here. So now that I have those lines, I can now cut down here and I won't cut too far because I've made my half inch line right there as well. And that is how I made my template. My poster board has like a shiny side and a dull matte side. And I am going to be putting these together, matte sides or dull paper sides together. 
and I'm going to use my tape roll, but I am leaving our half inch section at the bottom open for the time being. So I'm gonna line my pieces up, take my tape roller, run that along the edge and along the top as well, and then one in the middle, and press that down to secure. Then come over here and do the same thing. So I'm gonna go off camera and finish putting my pages together and then we'll get them put into our book. Once you put all your pieces together, you may have some areas that just kinda need to be trimmed off where they didn't quite meet up and that is just fine. And this is just personal preference. This is a corner round and instead of having those sharp edges just like that, I insert my corner and that just gives it just a nice rounded edge. Now that my edges are all nice and round on there, we're going to take our open end here, just gently fold that back. Then I'm gonna take some more of my half inch double-sided tape. I'm gonna place it in the little channel there and press that down. Turn it over, take my tape, and again, set that down in our little channel. Press that in. So we're gonna take our paper before we pull this off. It is going to set just like that over our little peak here that we've created in our paper. So I just wanna kinda of line it up to make sure it's going to be even with the one below it. Remove that paper to reveal the other side of the tape and press it down. Then we're gonna come over here and we're going to remove this paper and then press that down. And I have chosen this gorgeous paper to go on the inside here and that's just going to finish this off so beautifully. And before I put this in here, I'm going to round off these ends here. And it's just personal preference. And I'm taking my half inch double-sided tape roll, and getting that as close to the edge as possible. And I'm gonna put these all along the edges. And then I'm just gonna add a couple of rows down the length of my page. Take my bone folder and make sure that's stuck down really well. And I don't remove all of my tape at once and try and stick it down. I wanna do a little dry fit first. So I'm going to clip that along the bottom, pull off the tape right here. Now just pull these other strips off. And then I take my bone folder and just smooth all of that down. That is just so gorgeous. I love it. And I'm gonna follow that same process when I do the back. I love how my little book turned out. I've got some little ribbons and laces already put in there. And I was able to take this entire box of this ribbon and lace and add it to my little book here. And I know that this is a lot of work and this isn't for everyone, but I am so pleased with how this turned out. And I still have more ribbon that I am going to be putting into this book. And then I also have the other book that I'm going to be completing. I haven't put the pages in that one yet. And I just really enjoyed this little project and I hope you did too.
thank you so much for joining me today. It has been my pleasure to craft with you. I am always looking for cute ways to store my craft supplies, and I am just really pleased with how my little book turned out. Please remember to subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next time, my sweet friends, be blessed.